Guys, my mind is blown. I just flew Emirates Business Class on their A380 from Dubai to Frankfurt, and when I tell you that the flight left me as impressed as a flight in the world's best business class on board Qatar Airways, you might be shocked considering the bad reputation of Emirates Business Class. In today's video, I'm gonna spill the piping hot Middle Eastern mint-infused tea on how the pandemic has been the great equalizer in terms of business class, and why I'll be looking to fly Emirates Business Class over Qatar Airways in some some cases going forward. Here is my fresh off the grill review of Emirates A380 business class from a flight I took less than one week ago. This is the world's largest international airline. Emirates operates a staggeringly massive fleet of 114 A380s, making them the world's largest operator of the world's largest aircraft type. I've done several videos discussing this strategy along with its benefits and drawbacks which are linked in a card now. Regardless, what we do know is that the E380 provides undoubtedly the best passenger experience in the world. In economy class, the feeling of spaciousness is unparalleled. On the upper deck, each window seat has massive drawers for storage on the side and of course, Airbus left plenty of space for fun amenities like bars and showers. This is what brought us Emirates E380. 380 first class, which is the most fun flying experience in the world, in my opinion. Showering at 35,000 feet, meeting rich people and pretending to fit in at the fully stocked bar, sign me up. The area where Emirates has always lagged behind though is their business class, the middle child. I'm not innocent in this Middle Eastern drama either. I've gone Qatar Airways, Qatar Airways, Qatar Airways is where it's at in business class and I've always overlooked Emirates for a good reason. Their 777 business class seat is among the worst in the industry and it honestly saddens me that Emirates doesn't invest more in the 130 plus 777s they have in their fleet. Additionally, the onboard experience isn't nearly as polished as onboard Qatar Airways. Emirates doesn't offer dine on demand, they don't have the same personalized service, they don't have amenity kits, and their whole thing is based off making business class sort of an assembly line. So how on earth is Emirates business class suddenly as good as Qatar Airways? Let's start from the beginning, and as always, for details on how I paid, stay tuned until the end. This morning, I woke up at the sensible hour of 11 a.m., as one does on a Monday. To be fair, I'd flown in from Doha the night before, touching down at 3.30 a.m. and getting to my airport hotel at 4.30 a.m. That morning, I showered, got dressed, and took the airport shuttle to Emirates Terminal 3. All right, after a quick night in Dubai, it's time to head to Frankfurt. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wow, it is way too hot. <laughs> Ah, Dubai Airport. How I wish I loved you. For almost half a decade now, Dubai's new airport Al Maktoum has been partly ready to start operating for Emirates. And the idea is for Emirates to move their hub there eventually, given that Dubai's main airport, or current airport, is way overcrowded. Unfortunately, the timeline keeps being pushed into the future, and in the meantime, we're left with an airport that feels an awful lot like it's constantly not able to handle what's being thrown at it. There's a dedicated first and business class check-in area, nice, but it looks like this. Am I in the wrong place or is this the IKEA online order pickup part of the airport? Compare that to Qatar Airways premium check-in area which has seats, hot towels, and a private lane straight to the lounge. Once you complete check-in, clear security, and head to the Emirates lounge, that's where things start to look up. Emirates lounges are incredibly unique and they embody the concept of bigger is better, literally. The lounge spans almost the entire length of the terminal, with the business class lounge one floor up from the rest of the terminal and the first class lounge one floor above that. At first, when I entered, I was confused because virtually all the seats were blocked due to COVID. I later realized there was still copious seating space in the other end of the lounge where the food was being served. Emirates has delicious, varied, and healthy lounge catering. In fact, it's among my favorite business class lounge catering in the world. I had a massive portion of absolutely delicious hummus and baba ganoush along with dolmas. There's also a hot food section which features dishes for all dietary requirements. 
There is of course champagne and a variety of other drinks as well. What I love about the lounge is that, first of all, it's so bright with outside views from almost everywhere. Secondly, it doesn't feel like a lounge, which I know some people dislike. For me, it feels like a luxurious terminal with free food and plentiful comfortable seating. I really appreciate that, especially since many lounges are starting to get so packed, it's impossible to find a seat as travel resumes. Emirates lounges, meanwhile, just feel fun. When it's time for boarding, Emirates doesn't let you burn off those lounge calories because your gate is right next to the lounge. All right, let's hop on board, shall we? I am so excited. A380, I'm like, it's been too long since I flew both. <laughs> While the downstairs boarding area for our flight was packed since economy was fully booked, upstairs there were 10 of us relaxing and loving life. What a difference. I also love that Dubai Airport has such striking apron views and gives you a view of your aircraft from almost any gate. On board, I was greeted by a flight attendant who pointed me to my seat. Traditionally on Qatar Airways, a flight attendant will do more than this and guide you to your seat to make sure you get settled. However, I haven't had this on a single flight since the pandemic began, so the airlines are now equal in this regard. Let's take a closer look at the configuration of this aircraft. The entire upper deck of the Emirates A380 is occupied by premium cabins, with 76 business class seats in a 1-2-1 setup. There's also a rare version with economy class in place of first class, but that's not relevant for the business class part of the experience. Now first of all, when it comes to flying as a couple, as friends, anyone you want to sit close to really, the odd numbered middle seats are the way to go. These are further from the aisle and close together making it easy to talk, touch, etc. I was traveling all alone because Emirates business class is expensive enough for one person, let alone two, so in this case I opted to sit by the window. I went back and forth between sitting at the back of the forward cabin or sitting in the rear mini cabin. I always want to disturb and get noticed as little as possible while filming, so I changed my seat a million times depending on where others end up being seated. My seat 25k was an excellent choice, although there was one drawback. What is behind the mini cabin? The onboard bar. And what do people do in a bar? Get loud. Really loud. That was the only annoying aspect of sitting back here, but depending on the time of departure and type of flight, sitting back here is probably worth it, at least for me since I prefer a feeling of more intimacy. Now let's talk about the elephant in the plane? The cabin color scheme. Some people love it, and some people hate it. Personally, this is just me, I find it absolutely unequivocally, preposterously fabulous. There's something so fun about going full out with the gaudy, tacky color scheme for however long an Emirates flight lasts. I certainly don't want this around me on a daily basis, but it's a nice change from the bland cabins that are so common in Europe and East Asia. As I headed to my seat, I barely had time to put my bag down, let alone put myself down in my seat, before a cheerful flight attendant came by asking if I'd like something to drink. I forgot that Emirates serves pre-departure drinks off a tray which I'm generally not a huge fan of, so I was Brittany Broski in her famous kombucha girl moment for a second. No. Well. <laughs> Until I realized that one of the drink choices was a ginger hibiscus juice which sounded divine. The other two options were orange juice or champagne. As I settled in, I was showered with an overwhelming sense of gratitude. Guys, I just have to say something quick in the moment. Sorry if this is a bit bright, but there really is nothing like being on the top floor of an A380. I was on an A350 yesterday and that doesn't come close to this. This is the peak of comfort. I am oh, so happy. I was back on an A380 on one of the airlines I love most in the world. The sun was shining through the window and I was sitting there in comfortable air-conditioned luxury, peering out on the machines I love most airplanes. It doesn't get better than this and I'm so grateful that you guys watch my videos and give me a reason to do this. We're currently less than 40,000 subscribers away from 500,000. If you want to take a second to do something that'll make another person's day, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free and takes half a second. 
A short while later, the crew came around to hand out a mask and hand sanitizer, which was appreciated. They also offered hot towels. My first hot towel since March 2020. Okay, I know I get way too excited about a towel soaked in water that has been heated in a microwave, but these things just make me so happy and contribute so much to the sense of luxury. This flight reminded me that Emirates is really the airline of fun and gimmicks. You'll see why throughout the video. Just two examples are the detachable tablet at your seat which is so unnecessary and sort of useless yet so wonderfully over the top. Is this 20-ish inch screen not big enough for you? How about this iPad mini size screen that does all the same things? Oh wait, you're thirsty? No problem, you have your own mini bar with a dedicated glass. It's not like you can ask the crew for any drink at any time you want, right? Again, so unnecessary but so fun. Besides those seat components, you have more useful things like charging, a reading light, seat controls, and plenty of storage, both on the console and in the side bins by the windows. The tray table extends rather awkwardly out from under the console and it's not possible to go pee pee while the table is out which is a bummer, especially when Emirates has such good looking bathrooms. I mean, look at this! Back at the seat, you don't have to worry about the Dubai heat or the Frankfurt chill because you have individual air vents at all seats, including the sides where there are no overhead lockers. Love that. Also waiting at the seat were my headphones, which were pretty decent. They're not branded, but they're comfortable and noise cancelling. So here are a few observations on the service, which I'd say is what differentiates Emirates from Qatar Airways the most. While good old Qatar Airways is all about luxury, Emirates is more about pleasant and effortless comfort. They play tacky pop music during boarding instead of grandiose custom written boarding music. Their purser does welcome you on board, but they address you by your first name rather than your last. Emirates also does something I love where they highlight the multinationality of the crew in their welcome announcement. My flight had crew from 18 countries speaking 18 different languages. For example, the captain was from South Africa, the first officer from Mexico, the purser from Australia, and someone else from Spain, just to name a few. The crew seemed genuinely happy and can be heard chatting and laughing in the galley at most times. Personally, I don't mind this type of service as long as I feel that the crew is passionate about their jobs, which was certainly the case on my flight. However, service is the most important thing for me on a premium flight, so I must admit that I do have a soft spot for the structure with which Qatar Airways crews perform their job. Some like it, some don't, but for me, flying in a premium cabin feels like a rare opportunity to get pampered and Qatar Airways crew convey the sense that they are happier when their passengers are happier. That said, I have noticed a shift since Qatar Airways reduced staffing last year. While this Emirates flight felt much better staffed than any Qatar Airways flight I've been on in the last 12 months. So enough of the chatting, let's fly. Shortly after takeoff, I browsed the in-flight entertainment system called ICE. It's among the best in the world, I can't say anything other than that it rocks. The exterior cameras really add to the experience as well. Another thing that rocks is the in-flight Wi-Fi, and Emirates has great pricing for a full flight pass. You get free messaging throughout the flight as a Skywards member too. It's free to sign up, so it's a no-brainer if you don't want to purchase a full Wi-Fi pass. Next up, food. Emirates has massive menus, physically as well as figuratively. I appreciate the physical size for the premium look and feel. In terms of content, there's definitely enough to keep you full. Although I really do wish that Emirates offered dine on demand so you could eat whenever you want. The problem with not having this is that there's almost no flexibility. I was hungry later in the flight and basically had to beg the crew to even give me a fruit plate. Forget about getting anything hot. The meal started out with some nuts and more of the hibiscus ginger juice. Even pre-pandemic, Emirates would serve its business class meals on a tray. This is an area where airlines can vastly increase the premium feeling. 
but it's also far more effort for the crew to serve food restaurant style directly on the tray table, so I understand why trays are preferred by many airlines. This is another area where Qatar Airways now provides the same experience as Emirates, since their meals are also being served on trays since 18 months back, and will continue to be served that way for now. The starter of my vegan meal was some sort of salad with pulses and herbs. It was so-so, and I regret not choosing the Arabic meza off the menu instead. For the main, I was served this couscous dish. When I first saw it, I was concerned, but it was so delicious and really creative. I think these brown things were cooked figs or something. They melted into the rest of the dish and provided a super unique flavor. For dessert, I was served this vegan chocolate cake with jam. It was yummy. So, in my opinion, Emirates beats Qatar Airways in the catering department when it comes to food taste and quality, especially since Emirates continuously updates their menus. So next up, time for a nap. The Emirates A380 bed is among the best business class beds out there. They have this thick mattress pad and plenty of room for your knees and feet. Seriously, 10 out of 10 points for the bed. The bed is extremely comfortable, dangerously comfortable. I didn't actually want to sleep, so instead I lay there listening to Emirates World Radio, which is Emirates' own radio channel. Now, the content is pretty much all propaganda about how amazing Dubai and the UAE are, but I love listening to it. All the stories are uplifting and frame Dubai as a place that's self-aware, continuously evolving in all areas, and has its arms open to the world. How true that is, I can't really say, but it makes for great listening regardless. After about an hour of that, I headed to the onboard bar. Here, I was reminded by the crew that Emirates loves to give you free Polaroids as a souvenir from your flight, so I had a little photo shoot. I adore this special touch. It's available in all cabins if you ask, and again, it underlines the idea that Emirates is an airline going for fun and relaxation rather than pure luxury. At the bar, I also ran into a passenger from first class, which made me miss their onboard shower suites so much. They really are the coolest place in the sky. Speaking of bathrooms and hygiene, today's video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, whose grooming products I use and love. They're the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products and creators of the trimmer that comes with me all around the world. The Lawn Mower 4.0. What's so great about this specific trimmer, you might ask? Well, first of all, it's waterproof, so you can use it in and outside the shower. It features advanced skin-safe technology, so you can confidently use it anywhere you please, an LED light, and and it has a travel lock which allows you to put it anywhere in your luggage without risking it starting to buzz. One quick wireless charge lasts me an entire trip with 90 minutes of use. If you get the performance package, you also get the weed whacker which keeps your nose and ears silky smooth. The kit also includes a couple of other hygiene products and right now you get two free gifts with each order. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use promo code non stop Dan at checkout. A little bit of work, a lot of snacks, and a hot towel later, we started our descent into Frankfurt. So let me give you my overall thoughts and start by mentioning what I think Emirates does better than Qatar Airways nowadays. Before the pandemic, I would have 100% without a doubt said that Qatar Airways business class was preferable in all situations. For the moment though, I don't think that's the case. First, Emirates flights are fully staffed. Second, Emirates offers hot towels. Reason alone to fly them, hello. Third, they offer big premium menus. Fourth, their lounge is large and not crowded. Fifth, they have excellent and varied catering. Sixth, a superb bed by business class standards. Seventh, and most significantly, Emirates is bringing back more and more Airbus A380s, which are without a doubt the best way to fly in all cabins. The comfort level really is unbeatable. The closest competitor, in my opinion, is the Airbus A350, which Qatar Airways usually flies to a lot of destinations. Right now, however, they've grounded 13 of these, so the majority of their fleet is made up of old 777s or cramped 787s which are not nearly as comfortable. Overall, as you can tell, this flight made me excited to fly the Emirates A380 again as soon as possible and I'd be happy to do so in any cabin class. Until Qatar Airways restores its onboard experience to pre-COVID levels, Emirates is truly a strong contender on all fronts. 
As always, I'll end with discussing how I paid. My flight was a cash ticket from Dubai to Frankfurt and returning from Amsterdam to Dubai. I paid $590 round trip in economy and upgraded this flight straight after booking, using 39,000 Emirates miles which I could transfer instantly from Chase. Right now, Chase is offering a limited time historically high sign-up bonus of 100,000 points when you get their excellent Chase Sapphire Preferred card. You can learn more at the link in the description, but if you're interested in a free upgrade on a future Emirates flight, definitely check out that card for the limited time bonus sooner rather than later. Getting 100,000 points on a card with an annual fee of less than $100 is unheard of. So thanks for joining me today, guys, and until I see you all next time, fly safe.